is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here bringing the video here today, bringing you guys an After Effects tutorial to create your own cool mascot logo animation. So as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, um, it's basically what I used to actually, uh, I guess, showcase on Twitter, give a little cool little gift that you guys saw me do as well, I had, like how to do that and stuff last week. Um, so I want to show you guys something like this, right, where it kind of just flies in like so and uh, kind of like just separates the background. I feel like that's just one thing I want to show you guys as well as kind of uh, how to like animate um, like blinks or something like this, where it's more or less something like bouncy. I'm not gonna show you exactly like this, but I guess this premise here follows the same as uh, like blink in the eye, right? Because I did this originally, but then I was like, it doesn't really go with the whole fierce dragon thing. So I went with more of like a simple scale uh, flying thing. So it worked pretty well. I got some really good feedback and I definitely want to do a video on it to show you guys exactly how to go ahead and do it. So as always guys, turn likes on the video because it's a secret down below and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it as always. And so yeah, I believe that's it. I'm gonna show you guys the really quick prep, and then we'll get right into uh, After Effects. Excuse me. So first off, we're just gonna quickly jump into Photoshop just to show you guys some really simple things. All right, guys. So right before we get into Photoshop, naturally we're gonna grab our logo from Illustrator. So I say that because there's people out there who do Photoshop logos. There's something in my hair. Uh, yeah, that's not a fucking thing. Okay. So allow me to then help you guys out and move to Illustrator, but. Let's just say you're already an illustrator, right? And you already have a cool mascot and whatnot. If your mascot has something where your line work is basically all in one, you're definitely good to go to kind of for the actual first part where it's more um, cooler. The whole eye blinking thing can be done with this kind of style as well. But I'm going to say something as well. If you were an illustrator who does, I guess, like part and like part illustrations where you kind of work on an eye, then you work on another eye, and then you work on a nose, and you work on a mouth, and then you kind of have all those things in a different file. Hopefully, I do it. I kind of tell you guys specifically enough that way you kind of be like, oh, okay, that's me. Um, definitely animating your logos would be so much, so much, so much easier because you already have kind of parts to deal with. So for me, in this sense, I'm going to just be kind of cutting out this top part here, middle part here, and this bottom part here on this logo. And then kind of like hiding the whole fact that I have like line work here with uh, basically a back and color that kind of matches it. Right? So you kind of get what's going on now. Okay, so I'm going to drag this logo inside of Photoshop. All I got to do is just use the direct selection tool, direct selection tool, highlight all of it, and then just drag it right into Photoshop and we're good to go. So. I'm going to rasterize, oh, the layer, why is the layer already rasterized? Um, la rasterize your layer regardless, it shouldn't be, it's because I have, oh, it's because I already did this, I forgot, that was my second take, don't worry about it, don't, don't it's okay. Uh, basically, rasterize the layer, once you have it, <laughs> rasterize the layer, we're going to take the pen tool, and we're going to pencil out this first part right here. You guys already kind of naturally saw where I'm kind of kind of cutting out, which is this top layer here for the actual, uh, these little horns here. We're going to right click, make selection, press OK. Press M on our keyboard, right click, and then that'll give you the option to layer via cut once you do have the actual marquee tool selected. Now, for a quick instance, if you guys do not actually have a mascot layer that kind of you can kind of like figure out where a top, middle, and bottom is, um, this right here is another example that I have <coughs> where I would kind of have like basically two parts where it's mostly really his head shape here and it's really cool rotate like ro rotating. Does it really even matter if I sold it anymore? But you know, it's it's cool, right? It's there. And that's kind of how it's split up into two parts. So if you were someone like me and he has two parts, two parts is pretty good as well. I would just definitely say more than one part is like, uh, you definitely need one. So it's just not super boring. And then two parts is like, I guess, blah, but three is like the minimum you want to go with. Okay. So let's go back into Photoshop. Let's go back over here and let's go ahead and quickly just cut this other part out. Pen tool. Where are you? Pen tool. There you are cut this out right here okay I'll try to cut it out it doesn't really matter too much um right here right click make selection layer via copy excuse me layer via cut this is the bottom so we're gonna drag this type BTM this is MID spelling with sesso and this is top just like so so now that we have a top middle and bottom you then will save this save this as I already have two here one's the uh, bouncy um, PSE you'll see in a second then one is this file where it has uh, I'll just quickly resave it, it doesn't really matter whatsoever and then once I can do this I already have it inside uh, After Effects for me to go so I already have the fly in as you can see top middle and bottom so for the quick little composition that I'm using in today's video it's 1920 by 1080 height and then 30 frames per second right so it should be the same exact document size that you use inside Photoshop as well and then to drag in your files which I already have in here but I'll show you guys really quickly import file click on your dragon import it and then you're gonna have a cool little pop-up here just do uh, composition retain layer sizes press ok and then simply you're gonna have a composition already set for you guys and then you're gonna drag it in here if you guys want to drag in a different composition if you didn't actually make your um, composition 1920 by 1080p inside Photoshop it's okay this is pretty much okay the same exact thing and uh, yeah there it is but I already have it right here and uh, just in case you guys want to see the, the whole blink thing again 
This is the blank one, right? So that's pretty cool. Look, look how, look how cute it is. It's cute, it's cute but you want to have cute as a dragon, so that's a thing. However, I'm gonna show you guys that as well um, near the middle of this tutorial. So first things first is to kind of get this thing going. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and start off with the middle part here. So I'm gonna just kind of target this layer only, <clears throat> and we're gonna get this thing going. I'm gonna take my render and we're gonna make this three seconds. And so we'll so I can only render three seconds right here, right? I'm going to go to about three. I'm gonna, actually going to go about about two and a half or one and a half frames. So is that a, that's right here? Let's just go right here. OK, so once I find out where I want to have my end point be, so this is what I'm going to be doing right now is illustrating to you guys where I want my position to end all my rotations, everything to end. So that's right here for me. I'm going to go ahead and press S on my keyboard. Make sure I um, keyframe my scale. I'm going to press R on my keyboard. Make sure I rotate, excuse me, keyframe my rotation. And then that's about it right now. So first things first, we're going to make sure we go back to the beginning here and we're going to press S again. By the way, this is this little really quick. Those are very simple, simple, like little cut, uh, shortcuts S for scale. Um, and then what I say R for uh, rotation. So once you kind of have those already done when you did these little keyframes right here, if you guys want to know if you press U on your keyboard while you're selecting the layer that you just changed all those things to, right? It'll show you guys all of your keyframes and where you put them and all that cool stuff. It'll make it very, very handy for you to kind of quickly show all the things that you have going on. So if I were to, excuse me, go to the scale and we're going to keyframe our scale because at the beginning we were going to have our scale be, um, excuse me, keyframe my scale. Where did it, where did it go? Keyframe my scale again, just like so. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in for a second because I'm going to take my scale and I'm going to just drop it down by like to about 10, right? So I would say that's pretty, actually five would be probably ideal. It's so about five. So you're gonna see it very basically just go zoom in and out, just like so. And that's kind of what you definitely want to have for the beginning. Um, with that being kind of done, I would really quickly just show you guys how to do this right now. And we're gonna go ahead and just drop this down. Cause you see how it's kind of weird if you kind of would start your animation and you kind of have this in the background. You just see like this really awkward random like orange dot. You don't want to definitely have that. You don't. You want to have that be the start of your animation. So what I basically do here is I'm gonna go ahead and click here, go to my opacity. So I'm gonna go to about my my beginning frames. Click on the opacity keyframer, and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see. Simply, uh, the opacity was already, or it's already there. Okay, so we're gonna make this zero opacity in the beginning, just like so, and then right about two frames, we'll make this 100. So what's gonna, it's gonna do now, right? It's gonna more basically, more or less fade in. It's gonna look like it's almost coming, in, I guess, in from a, uh, like a, like a very far distance. See how that kind of works here. Um, I would even be so certain to move it even one frame. Like it doesn't really matter as long as you don't see it in the beginning. Um, this is pretty okay, right? So if you want to, you can kind of separate a little more, but for now, this is pretty fine for what I did. I believe I did a little bit something different. However, this is kind of like the premise of it. So now that that's done, I'm gonna quickly just kind of hide this. Can I hide this actually? Cause I just realized I should have waited for this. I forgot how to hide things. I don't know how to hide them. Uh Oh, anyway, let's just go ahead and pretend that we can see it in the beginning for a second. Right, because I want to do is I want to rotate really quick. I want to show you guys the actual rotation. So I'm going to take my rotation and just do plus about 20 or 20 to 25 is pretty good. Anything too much is might be a little bit too weird to kind of time it so nothing kind of gets in front of anything. Um, in the sense of I guess the bottom or anything touching or overlapping of colors, you want you definitely want to get like not do that. Um, so let's just go ahead and zoom out, All right? And uh, zoom out again. Right, this is pretty much what exactly what you want. Okay, so cool, we have our rotation done, and then we have our positioning done. Um, excuse me, our scaling done, and I'm gonna quickly make sure I go back to zero frames on our opacity, so we don't have to worry about that. So it's gonna happen here. It's almost gonna, it's, gonna, it's looking like it's like coming in from a very far distance, which is pretty okay. If you guys wanna kind of like make the opacity a little further, so kind of looks like it's fading in, that's okay as well. But for me, I'm just gonna say this is okay, and uh, we're good to go to the next part, which is simply taking our keyframes here. And putting on a nice little easy ease. So both on the scale and the rotation, right? We're gonna right click on them, go to uh, keyframe assistant, easy ease, click on our graph here, highlight them both, click on these little yellow things, bring one pretty far in, and then the other one just a little bit in, just like so. So this will kind of give it more finesse when it's actually coming in. So I'm gonna just quickly preview render it. You'll see how very, very nice and kind of quick to kind of like a slower, um, I guess distance between the times that the actual uh, scale and rotation finish. So that's basically what we want to have. And uh, it's pretty dang good. So let's just go ahead and quickly do this uh, the top one. So I wouldn't want to copy and paste. I forgot if I can copy and paste them. I don't think so because it's, I think it's going to move the top um, to like a different spot if I were to do it, right? 
Yeah, that's just gonna, I don't want that to happen. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out where um, our keyframes ended over here, which I was where I'm at right now. So cool. Let's go to our scale, of course, pin that on there, our rotation, and of course our opacity will change a little bit in a second as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same exact thing. So about, um, what did I have about five scale? Just like there is pretty good. So it's gonna come in just with this as well. And now for this rotation, however, I'm gonna make it rotate so that's on the different uh, a different axis or a different um yeah different route. So basically, I did one that was coming in from more of like a this turn kind of like okay how is it like it's coming from this way. I want this one to come in from this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate this. Besides that being um, what it was, which was positive 20, I'm gonna do about negative 20. So negative 20, just like so, it should rotate in a different way. So now, as you can see, two of them come in on a different uh, axis, which is pretty cool, right? Also, did one kind of finish before the other? It did. Okay, how do I fix that? So find out, I probably didn't put the actual keyframe where it was. No, I did, I'm a little clueless. Yeah, I don't know why that that's happening. Oh, okay, I figured it out. So it was because I have this on Easy Ease already. I should have probably done these together, all these Easy E key, uh, keyframes. So what I, what's happening is my Easy Ease, because it happened, the beginning animation happens a little bit faster. This feels like it's a little bit slower, but it's not. When we actually do the Easy Ease, it should be actually evened out. So I don't know, it tripped me out for a second. I was like kind of figuring out what happened if I was like messing up or if I had to uh, tell you guys to do something differently. But it's only because uh, we didn't Easy Ease our keyframes yet, but that's okay. So uh, basically you can see how it kind of works out in, in the first place anyway, right? So you have two different things coming in from two different areas in two different rotations. So it's not super boring. It's very cool and looks really nice. So let's now go ahead and put these easy ease on so we can actually get the same exact, um, about the same exact timing. Um, easy ease. What I would probably do is I would wait to actually do all these at once. But for this instance, it's pretty okay. If I just highlight them all, go here, highlight the graph. <clears throat> Also, if your graph does not look like this, make sure you actually have uh, edit speed graph and not this one. This one's not not where you want to go. Um, let's just bring this in a little bit. <clears throat> and then this one in a tiny bit like so. So it should be a little bit more in touch. So there, you can definitely see how it's a little more in touch, right? So that's definitely what you want to have. Nice, cool, smooth, um, really nice animations going in here. So um, last but not least would be the... I'm going to put this at the end keyframe right there. Last but not least would be the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom. Drop this down, scale, keyframe, our rotation, keyframe, and we'll just press U on our keyboard to bring these both up now. So I'm gonna basically not do, actually I'm not gonna do any rotations. I don't, I don't even have to work with the rotation. Also forgot to do opacity on the top, so let me quickly do that as well. Um, but scale really is just gonna go keyframe that in the beginning, excuse me. I should uh, click on this little keyframe here, not this one. This will get rid of your one over here. So click on this or just change it, it'll change it automatically. And the scale was what, five, press okay. And let's just quickly do the uh, uh, the opacity for this really quick. And this will be uh, zero in the beginning. A frame up or two or whatever. 100. And let's quickly do that same thing for the top one. So click here. I forgot the actual shortcut for uh, the opacity. So if someone wants to tell me, so that way everyone else knows in the actual uh, channel who's ever watching the video. And let's make this one zero. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, this this is 100. I'm lying. And the first one is zero. I didn't change that one. There we go. So now everything's hidden. Uh -huh. And we're just going to simply see things just fly in. Let me move this down. See things just simply fly in, which looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. All we got to do is just kind of fix. Oh, this is kind of like a really good demonstration of how boring it looks when you actually do not do any easy ease. See how very cool and smooth and attractive this looks? This looks super just like, like bland. There's no character in this. So let's go ahead go to the bottom. And of course, easy ease. This right here, just like so. Easy ease. Click here, highlight them, bring these in a bit, and bring this over here. And this should be somewhat the same. Yep. There we go. Now they're both coming in very, very nice. All right, sweet. So now, besides actually seeing all these really awkward cuts, what I would do is I would right click. I already have one here. Let me, uh, I'll just leave that one here. It's okay. Right click, new solid. You're gonna just take your solid here, whatever, name it just whatever, just your background kind of, right? Click on this little eyedropper here and click on the line work color that you kind of have right here. Press OK. It's gonna give you one just like so. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's gonna basically hide all of that line work that you guys had and it's gonna look way cooler now when you kind of have it fly in. So it looks very, very freaking cool, I'm not gonna lie. Um, And yeah, just like so. Now let me quickly make sure that when I hide this, I want to make sure that when I hide these things, so let me quickly go ahead and take the bottom 
move this up one, take the top, move this up down one as well. That way I kind of hide those little lines. You guys saw those lines? I want to definitely hide that so that way it looks like this. Way better. Cool. So now that all these little lines are hidden, or basically our cuts are hidden, right? What we're going to do is, uh, all I did, by the way, was I just used my arrow key to move it up one and then the top moved it down one. So now we have this here. What's going to happen here is this last transition part that I did. Um, I'm also very, very loose with the actual timing it's actually going to be uh, taking for us. But realistically, 15 seconds is a pretty good time for an animation to go for to kind of do what I did with like presentation wise for a GIF. Um, and then converting into a GIF is a video that I already did last week. So if you guys want to check the videos out, you guys definitely can. However, what I ended up doing was kind of have the background, this background right here, kind of like separate in a really cool way that was different. So it just kind of looked really cool and kind of revealed the actual line work of the actual um uh thing here excuse me the actual uh let me make sure this uh, that's what i gotta do i'm gonna make a new file excuse me <laughs> oh god new solid i feel like i'm a new like tutorialist or whatever i'm just like quickly blanking out it's because i'm not too familiar with the program yet but we'll get super familiar in a second but let's just also have the line work color and a white that way we kind of have a white background as well after we actually reveal the white background to show our line work um I forgot what i was saying pre uh, previously but i guess it didn't matter too much but i did forget um, so yeah, right? So let's go ahead and just reveal the actual white background by actually doing a really cool transition with the dark background. So what we're going to do is go to effects. We're going to go to trans, uh, transition and we're going to go to, I believe I did jaw, CC jaw wipe. Was it this one? I believe it was, the, uh, was this one, right? Yeah, it was this one. So what I'm going to basically do kind of figure out where I want to have it. I'm just going to mess around my completion about 30 right now, just so I can see what's going on. I'm going to take my direction. We're going to move this around here. The reason why I chose this one is because you can ch actually change around with like Robo Jaw, um, Blocks. You, I think I did, I didn't do Waves, but Waves would be pretty cool as well for, I guess, more of a, uh, a bubbly logo maybe. That's not a cool dragon. So I definitely want to have spikes, but then you can also mess around with the actual weight um, and width of them and such. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with the width a little bit so kind of have it more like this. Very simplistic and looks really, really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this be at zero. At where? Um, let's just say 1B, 2B, so I'll be about, about 30 seconds is pretty okay. So I'm going to take the completion, put this at one, uh, excuse me, 0, keyframe it, press the unit keyboard to bring those those keyframes, just like so, let's zoom into the timeline a little bit, and at about maybe, this is another second ahead, so let's go about mm, half a second, and then just take this and just throw this all the way up to 100. So what's going to happen here is, you're going to have the cool little animation fly in, and then you're going to have it just do this really cool simple wipe. Now that might be a little bit too fast, but I'm not going to worry about that right now, but I'm just going to move it to four seconds for now or about there. Yep. That's about four seconds. You can see that how that's going to work, right? All this is going to take about two seconds for the actual animation to do that. And then this little simple, cool little, uh, change, which is kind of like revealing this white background, revealing the actual, um, landmark of the actual mascot, which is really, really cool. Now, of course, we're going to have to, of course, add a nice little easy ease that graph, highlight this, bring this in, bring this in a little bit. And now let's see what it looks like. I've got to render really quick. That's okay. And then like, oh, that looks really nice. Pew. So, and uh, the whole cool little logo shine thing, you guys already saw how to do that as well. So I'm not going to show you guys how to do that. However, let me quickly show you guys at least how to do this little really cool, simple blink stuff. All right, guys. So to basically get this really cool little blink here, you're of course going to have to ha naturally have a PSD with your eyes separated. So your eyes need to be separated here. So the way I kind of did that, and over here, um, I kind of showed you guys already beforehand, but that was a different take. Uh, here, boy. Okay, so you already have your line work here, right? So you're just going to simply just take your line work. Of course, you would want to do this with your, uh, you know, where it should belong. But I'm, kinda, I'm bringing it out so you can see what I'm actually doing. So essentially, when you have your line work, your eye should already be cut out, right? So essentially, what you're going to be doing is going to press Shift M on your keyboard. And then when your line work is selected, you, pr you pretty much just click inside your eye. You're going to select the eye. <coughs> excuse me, make it a different color. And that way, when you click over here, you drag this eye outside of the group that whatever you had it in, then you would naturally hide this. And then you'd bring, click on the line work again, shift M once again, click on the inside of your eye once again. And you just simply just take the A tool, which is, I believe the direct section tool, right? Select both of these and then use the pathfinder, which is in windows, uh, pathfinder and select this one right here, which is the combined shape option. That way you no longer have an eye, but when you bring this back in here, you do have an eye. So essentially what you're gonna be doing is, I'm gonna kind of fit where this should be. I know it's probably not exactly, but this is where the eye, right? You just kind of take this out. You, you'd of course save a picture with the eye not there. And then with only the eyes there, of course, in the original color. And uh, then you're gonna have a nice cool PSD, which looks somewhat like this, right? When you drag it in. So eye stuff here, very simple. Let's go to one second. 
right? It's not very simple whatsoever, but I just know how to do it, kind of. Uh, so that's why it's very simple for me right now. But it's gonna be super simple for you as well. Okay, also I get I should get a haircut this week. I promise I will try. <laughs> I keep saying that. Okay, so scale. S on a keyboard, S on a keyboard, keyframe, and keyframe. Oh, for some reason the keyframes are already there. That's a little bit awkward. Okay, right, wait, is there anything going on in this thing? I thought I deleted everything so I can show you guys. Okay, I did. Don't know why that was happening, but Okay, so two keyframes right at one second, because that's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in pretty far far in, right? And we're gonna zoom in so we have a two, four, six, eight frame kind of scaling here. <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna drop or excuse me, jump about two frames. So about four, we're gonna go to one to four right here, it's basically zero to four. And we're gonna take our <coughs> geez, there's something stuck in my throat. Okay. Um we're gonna go to our scale, take this about 20% down. 20% down for my eye scale and all that cool stuff this blink for me should look pretty good I don't want to drop it all the way down, but this right here is pretty okay um, Essentially you could drop it all the way down if you really want to maybe about 10 um, 10 will look pretty okay as well But I want to make sure I kind of still see it just a little bit of the eye So what I'm gonna do is now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of jump about four frames now So we're gonna go to uh, pass the uh, this is two. This is four Already I, oh, I went four frames not two frames. That's okay. We'll go about 10 Right, so that should be. I want to just two frames more than the halfway point than you went to here because I want it to be a pretty quick blink. And I'll take this and take our scaling back to 100%. Right, so essentially, what you're gonna have here is when I zoom out, a very nice quick blink, just like so. Right, and it looks pretty okay, pretty natural. Excuse me, it doesn't look natural, but the whole blinking animation is pretty much where I want it to be. So essentially, I had it at one frame at the start, of course, and I dropped two frames here, and then I jumped two frames plus another one just so I can have it just a little bit longer. If you want, you can even go a little bit longer as well or kind of space where you think the blink should be. Um, but personally, I think this is pretty okay. This is pretty default for me right now. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look quite natural yet. That's, that's why I kind of corrected myself the first time. Because what we want to do is we want to have that cool little, um, I guess a little twitch or that little, uh, I guess like facial features moving. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to one second. Actually, we're going to go back to where our blink basically starts where we kind of have our eyes closed, right? Um... No, I'm lying. Let's just leave it for here for a second. We're going to leave it at, word, at one second again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make sure that my body is selected, right? Just like so. This dragon body is selected. I'm going to go over here, this top a little pin here and call the puppet pin. We're going to click on this puppet pin, right? We're going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click one time uh, on the uh, top of the eye, on the bottom of the eye, <coughs> on top of the eye, and on the bottom of the eye. So you're going to have these cool little things here. I can press the UMI keyboard to bring up all the positionings here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I bring up one of these positionings right here as well, so I can jump to where it should be. Right about here is where the animation kind of has it, where it's, the eyes are closed, and this is where you definitely want to have it. So when you jump back to your puppet, this is your body right here, right? You're gonna take this little, uh, these little yellow circles and just drag them up and down. So I'm gonna take this top one, I'm gonna drag this one a little bit further down, excuse me, a little, little bit down, and then take this bottom one, and drag it tiniest bit up. I would have it even be a little more less than what you did on the top. So I'll say the top pretty further down right and then take the bottom and maybe just a little bit up just like so and what I'm gonna do now is you're gonna see I'm gonna go back to here I want to have these at the original position um I should actually made a keyframe previously but it's okay I'll try to figure out where it was so a little bit up a little bit down a little bit down a little bit up naturally what I would do is I would definitely try to kind of copy and paste these here if you really want to I'll just kind of like you know control C on these and then I'll delete this for a second because I don't want I want to make sure it's definitely where it should be. So that's that blink. But then at the end, I want to make sure it goes back to the original setting. So control V, those original settings. That way it kind of gets back to where it should be. Right? So that way when we zoom out, we'll see something along these lines right here, right? A very cool blink. Uh, let's just get rid of those uh, things. Right? I think it looks pretty good. It's not like grade A, it's not like 10 out of 10, like holy crap, so you did a blink. But you can essentially see that it, it looks a little bit animated, right? Everything's moving the way it should be, and the uh, the eye looks like it, it definitely blinked, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be working on this kind of stuff a lot more. I want to definitely, of course, work with uh, After Effects a lot more, but the whole conclusion of the month of animation is pretty much done. So I hope you guys learned and got familiarized in After Effects. However, I'm not the personal best at it yet. I won't be grade A, but I would be at least somewhat... I'll have, like, I, I can put essentially, like 
maybe like four out of ten stars if I how much I know After Effects, right? So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. I showed you guys a really cool flying animation for your presentations on Twitter and uh, everything else besides the animation when I did previously, right? The whole flying stuff. All the other stuff is very simple positioning moving, so you can definitely do that very easily. Um, so yeah, the whole blink stuff is probably the hardest thing that I'm personally learning right now, but at right now, this is where I'm at. So I hope that you guys can take this and kind of like go with this a little bit more so you can kind of figure out yourself as well. And maybe some of you guys can teach me. But essentially, I think this looks pretty cool. I think it looks exactly how I want to have it um, at the sense of if I was going to do a blink, but I didn't do one. But it's okay. Anyway, I'm so very sorry if I, uh, I, uh, there's something I did wrong, but just please point me in the right direction so you can point other people in the right direction. And with that being said, I'm all done for today. And uh, of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Suspicious. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Comment on anything you want to see me do in the uh, comments down below, of course. And uh, don't forget to check out my Selfi, Selfi.com slash SissoHQ for all the premiums and packs of those $5. And I, I did 10 right there. I meant to do five, only five. Um, And as well as, what was I going to say? Oh, the Everything Pack is going to get a really crazy big update on Monday. So if you guys want to definitely get your money together, $30 basically is. You get everything in my Selfi store, plus all the stuff that comes out for free and free updates through your emails. So it's really, really cool. And with that being said, I'm all done. And uh, yeah, this was this wasn't too hard for me. It's this blinking thing was hard to kind of like figure out in a sense of like doing it, you know, naturally and getting you guys the uh, correct um, timeline references. However, I would definitely say experiment with it and kind of figure out what looks best to you or what looks best naturally in the animation setting. Cause working with animation is an entirely new or an entirely different jump of grab design. So I'll make sure I get that clear that I'm not the best and I'm not the, the most number one reference, but I'm definitely someone who's gonna be okay to show you guys the, uh, the basics. So, okay, now I'm done speaking. I'll talk to you guys later. Let's switch you out. Not to keep, <laughs> do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking tough guys, productive. I always mess that word up later. <laughs> I was so giggly this video, dude. Holy shit. Cause I'm tired, I think.